Uh, 21 more states close their polls between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern. Ryan Burge makes it his business to tally voter trends and report them online. He is a returning guest on EWTN News. He's a statistician and professor of political science at Eastern Illinois University. Ryan, great to see you, my friend. Uh, Gallup says that more than half of U.S. ballots were cast before Election Day, and 54 percent of registered voters said that they plan to vote before Election Day. Ryan, what do those numbers say to you? Oh, I think it's actually a very good thing for a couple of reasons. One, people can bank their ballot. So if something happened today, they couldn't make it to the poll for whatever reason, they're already taken care of. The other thing is it actually cuts down on the lines on Election Day. So people who waited to the last minute, like someone in that prior segment was just making their decision right now. If you drive by and see a line out the door, you might have to wait 30, 45 minutes or an hour. You might just keep on driving and not cast a ballot. But if you see the lines only five or 10 minutes, you'll stop, you'll park, you'll get out and you'll actually vote. So it actually might be better for voter turnout in every possible way if bigger and bigger chunks of the electorate decide to vote before actual election day. Yeah, absolutely. I know you recently uh, conducted a survey of more than 57,000 college students to see, you know, how they plan to vote this year. And your findings actually include some really interesting trends about Catholic students. Tell us what you discovered there. Yeah, so, you know, if you look at all the different religious groups that exist on a college campus, you've obviously got a lot of Christians, but the share of people who attend church every week on college campus is about 17% of the college student population in America. So it's a very small subset, but the only groups that I found who were right of center politically and right of center ideologically were Christians who attended church at least once a week. That includes Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox Christians, and Latter-day Saints. Every other group, whether it be, you know, atheist or or Jews or Muslims were all left of center. So really the only right-leaning group on American campuses today are weekly attending Christians. Yeah, you also uh, recently highlighted an article uh, which examined small towns where the polling places uh, were at a church. And, and then what happens when some of those places of worship are closed down, they shut down altogether? Tell us about what you find and the impact that it has even beyond the practice of faith. Well, I'll just say anecdotally, I voted at the Catholic Church uh, in my town today in another polling place about two blocks away is at a black Protestant church. And I have a friend that I spoke today. Uh, she voted at a Methodist church. So I think almost half the polling places in my town right now are in houses of worship. And my question is, when those places close down, where are we going to vote at? I mean, churches have always been amenable to allowing, you know, Election Day stuff happening on their premises to get those votes tallied. But there are not enough community centers and Elks Lodges and Moose Clubs for people to go vote. So I really wonder, in small towns especially, where there's not a lot of community buildings, how are we going to find precincts for people to cast these ballots? These are some of the things that we don't think about with the decline of religion. It's not just religious people that are hurt by it. It's actually everyone in the community in ways both big and small. Yeah, I'm glad you took a look at that for sure. Um, have Americans given more thought to, to this election than past elections? I think it's hard to ignore this election, right? I think it's in our face every single day, every single moment. And as we got closer and closer to this day, I think it's impossible to turn it off. I think, you know, social media makes it easier and easier to be more connected than ever before. And I think it used to be pretty easy to turn off such an election, especially if you weren't in a battleground state maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Now, if you scroll Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or Snapchat, you are going to find political content. And so you're going to be engaged. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for our mental health, I can't speak to that. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Ryan, always great to get your insights. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.